Jesus. Come on, let's appreciate my wife and these and this gentleman as well for leading us beautifully. Amen. Hallelujah. Appreciate yourself as well for being a faithful student of the word. Amen. It's the fifth day of the month of December, the year 2023. Simwaka inasonga. Na neno pia linatamba. Sindio. So we shall preach this gospel in season and out of. That is the instruction that we have. How many of us are excited to be here today? Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Our time is fast spent. Last week we concluded, not concluded, but last week we handled uh, the Holy Spirit and his power for you to do good. We said that man is able to do, I love the sound today, it should be like this. I can hear myself very well, please make it like that, always. We said last week that the Holy Spirit in you is the one that causes you the power to do good. Praise the Lord. So if you ever find yourself being someone that is struggling in being the good that you are, if you are finding yourself everything that comes out of you is only challengingly terrible, then embrace the work of the Holy Spirit in you because the Holy Spirit causes you to do good. So we spoke about the Holy Spirit and his power to do good. And I want us to start right from where we ended last week. The book of uh, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. I will open as well in mind the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. I will be reading from the NKJV. But last week you remember I told us to start from verse 34 for purposes of your understanding. But let's start from verse 38 alone. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And we said that if there is any anointing, it is the Holy Spirit in you, which is the power in you. So men should not be telling you about, okay, now you should receive anointing. If you are to receive anointing, it means you are not born again. But every believer is anointed. Say, I am the anointed one of God. Praise the Lord. So he says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. When he was anointed, this is what he did. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Why? For, the, for God was with he. I want us to understand something here. That before Christ went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, first it must have been because he was anointed. What was he anointed with? The Holy Spirit and two, power. So it means no one, and this is important, no one is able to do good except they are anointed. And who is the anointed one? The one that has the Holy Spirit, the one that has power. What is power? The gospel of Christ Jesus is the power of God. So there is nothing else that is called power apart from the gospel which is of Christ Jesus. Amen? It is important that you understand that for anyone to be able to be productive in goodness, there must be what causes them the productivity. And as far as scripture is concerned, anointing in you is what causes you productivity. In the book of 1 John, we won't go there. The apostle says, you have the anointing from God and you know all things. So it means it is the power that causes you to know all things. 
Let's read verse 38 again. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all, not a few, who were oppressed by the devil. Why? Because God was with him. Praise Jesus. Now let's go to the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. So that you see why it is important that the person acknowledges what they have received. Acts chapter 1, let's start from verse 4. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Acts 1, for scripture says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. So there is an instruction. Don't be so quick to make steps away. Patiently wait for the promise of the Father. And he said, that promise you have heard from me, what he was telling them in John 16, we read last week, we won't go back. For truly John, verse 5, for truly John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? One of the duties of a king is to take care of his subjects. Sindio. Now, his disciples are asking whether he's going to restore the kingdom to Israel, meaning that they be kings. What is expected of kings? To take care of his subjects. Provide for his subjects. Keep them. Secure them. Now, as these are desiring for the kingdom to be restored, this is what Jesus says. In verse 7, and he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But now we know that he is seated in us. Are we together? Then he tells them, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Oh, so the reception or the coming forth of the Holy Spirit is the coming forth of power. So there is no different service for receiving the Holy Spirit and then another service for receiving power. That is why the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. Which all truth is the power? So, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to me or you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Remember what, Je what, uh, what we have read in, 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 in chapter 10. That when he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And yet here, Jesus himself says, you, after you've received power by the Holy Spirit, you will be witnesses to me. What does it mean? You will be speaking and demonstrating the good of Jesus. I want you, I, I hope you are following. In Acts 10, 38, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. What followed after the anointing was the doing of good. Which good was it? Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. So it means the presence of the Holy Spirit is the presence of God. Now Jesus here says in verse 8, Acts 1, You shall receive power and the whole, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. What is that? The anointing. And what will you do? and you shall be witnesses to me. Meaning, you will be the demonstrators of what you have, of what I am. You will be the demonstrators of my person. 
you will be the demonstrators of my character. So it means if you are a witness, you know exactly what happened. You can even replay the scene. And so when they call, when you are in courts of law and they call witnesses, witnesses will say, I was there. This is what he did. He walked like this and then went here and then did this because you are a witness. Unajua. So if you are a witness to Jesus, then it means, it, did Jesus go about doing good? If you are his witness, you will exactly do good. Why? Because you have the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit that has caused you power. So there are things that you as a believer you walk in. You only need to have your mind open to these things. Praise the Lord. And that is why when Jesus was dealing with his disciples, there are some things that he would speak to them that he would not speak generally. Because there is something that he had in them that he did not have about others. That is what you the believer now walk in. The power of the Holy Spirit, which is the power for you to do good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The book of Acts chapter 13, not Acts, Matthew. The book of Matthew chapter 13. We shall start from verse 10. Matthew 13, 10. If you're a good student of the word, you'll know this chapter as being a chapter of parables. Verse 13 says, not 13, 10. And the disciples came, to, came and said to him, they are saying to Jesus. This is after Jesus had just spoken to them about a person who went and sowed seeds. Then some fell by the wayside, others to strong uh, among the thickets, and others on good soil. And then they are confused. Others are like, hey, this man is speaking with a lot of wisdom. But there is a privilege that the disciples had. So verse 10, and the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Let me repeat. And the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Now, in John 16, we handled last week, Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you into all truth. And who is truth? Christ Jesus. Because he has told us in chapter 14, that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So Christ Jesus is the truth. Yet, in, in John still, he has told us that I and my father are one. If you go forward in chapter 10. He has said, I and my father are one. So it means, if Christ Jesus is the truth, he is the truth just because God is truth. Right? And here, He's saying to his disciples that the reason why I do not speak to you in, in dark sayings, I do not speak to you in concealed sayings and parables is because there is what you have received. The ability to know the mysteries. So what does he mean? He's meaning that once you have the spirit, you have access to what ordinarily would not be readily available to an ordinary person. That is why you cannot say, No! You cannot be like everyone else. There is what you know, so that when things are mysterious to others, as for you, you know by the Spirit of God. So let's read again. 
He answered and said to them, verse 11, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So it means the person who keeps just in parables will never have access to the knowledge of the mysteries of God. Will never have access to the knowledge of the mysteries of God. Let me just show us something in the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Ephesians. Scripture says, are we there yet? Okay. It says, for this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. Listen, how that by revelation, how? By revelation. So it means what he's explaining is by revelation. So he says, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. Oh, so how do we receive knowledge by revelation of the mystery? So the mystery is revealed to us and then we get knowledge. That is why you do not read the Bible like an ordinary person. So that when they ask you, what is the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. Don't just read because Unajua. What was the purpose for his weeping? Looking at the world for which he is going to death and yet that world does not acknowledge him as their Lord and Savior. That is a cause for weeping. And that is why when his, his his, the, when women came and they were crying as he was carrying the cross, he told them, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and for your children because they are, it is for them that I am going this path. It will be deadly if they do not know the reason for why I am taking this path. And it is terribly happening to many because they, they see and then when they are watching like when it arrives around March, April, they start to show such movies. Passion, what? And then they show Jesus. So they depict. And then people cry. And then they shed tears. But in their shedding tears, they do not come to the realization ya kwamba wanamuitaji na tayari ashawa kufia. So, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. I love that the Lord says, even through the Apostle Paul, that when the Apostle Paul received the grace, it was for other persons' consumption. 1 Corinthians 12, I believe it is verse 7. That it, the, 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 the Holy Spirit is given to all for the profit of all. Just confirm that. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the spirit given to all. For the profit not just of a few. But for all. So he says. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one. For the profit of not a few. So going back to Ephesians. Paul says. Ha, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Which was given to me. For you. Ah, so the minister that is knowledgeable in the word of God, it is not for them. It is for them. As in not for them, the minister, but for them, the hearers. Same way, what has been given to me, in as far as the knowledge of God is concerned, is for you to feed on, grow your knowledge in Christ, be productive in the body of Christ, and as well teach this to other men who will be Faithful enough to teach unto others. Panesu Asifiwe. Verse 3 says, How that by revelation, bear with me, I'm trying to run so that 
I, uh, I accomplish. How that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. By revelation, knowledge comes. Knowledge does not come by how much time a man has stayed where they have stayed. But knowledge comes because by revelation, Christ has made known the mystery. And there is a way he has put for men to know by the Spirit of God that is resident in them. Friends, the only way you will be able to have knowledge is when you yield to the Spirit of God that is in you because it is through him that you receive revelation. That is what differentiates you from a non-believer who has learned English or Swahili and they are able to read the Bible. They will read but they cannot get revelation. They might read as much as they will read, but there is no revelation. It is only until the person has yielded to the spirit of God that then there is revelation for them to know what was previously mysterious. Haven't you been there? And you've read a particular portion of scripture for a long time. And it looks confusing. And then you just get a simple ex what might appear, which later you look at and be like, Kumbe, this was a simple explanation. And then you'll be like, why has this been disturbing me? Because the person who explained to you has the revelation of what they have explained to you. So you receive that revelation. And then what was mysterious starts to be just knowledge. At this I know. Same way we know now about how we are born again. Not because of any particular thing that we have done, but because we have been loved. Glory to the Lord. So verse 4 says, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He says, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Oh, so that is why sometimes you can read and be like, wow, hey, Akikina Paul. Because all you are seeing is their knowledge in the mystery. The ability for that knowledge of Paul in the mystery of Christ to be transformed to be your knowledge in the mystery of Christ is the work of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. You are able to see how Paul overcame challenges, how Paul overcame this and the other, how Paul struggled here and there, and then you're seeing how God was with him all through, but that is not enough for you because all that you will get is to see the knowledge of Paul in the mystery of Christ. Why are you up and away? Lakini wewe upo. So the difference is in how you give yourself to the Spirit of God. That as you're studying the mystery or understanding the knowledge of Paul in the mystery of Christ, that knowledge is able to transform you that you may have the revelation of what you have read to become wisdom for you that you may walk in that purpose. That can only be achieved by an understanding of a yielding to the Holy Spirit. He that is at work in you. Minus that yielding, you might be so knowledgeable because you have crammed the Bible, but there is nothing that you have grown into as a believer. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you let the abundance of the life of God in you be stirred up as you yield yourselves to the Spirit of God in you. How do you yield yourself? As you read, there is the ability to know someone's knowledge of the mystery. But how will that knowledge be applied to you? Or how will that knowledge become your knowledge? Because the knowledge of your pastor is only helpful to the intent or to the extent of 
teaching you when you are taught and you yield to what you are taught that is when that knowledge will transform you ndio maana huwa tunafunzanga watu wengi lakini juu hawajajifunza lakini wamesikia venye tunajua have you ever been to a place where unatoka huko ukishanga eh huyu mtu anaimba lakini umejifunza nini kwa uimbaji wake huo uimbaji wake umekusaidia vipi hekima yake ama tuseme ujuaji wake ama ujuzi wake umekusaidia vipi najua ujuaji ni ni ile ya wa, wa vijana si ndio sio nyinyi wale ujuzi wa huyu mtu umekusaidia vipi sasa wewe wa, wakati umelisoma neno na umejua ya kwamba eh hey, kumbe paula anajua sasa wewe ujuzi wake paulo umekusaidia kwa njia gani Let's read verse 5 and then we shall go to chapter 1 of Ephesians and I'll quit from there. Chap- verse 5 here, Ephesians 3. Because in verse 4 he has said that by which when you read so there is a there is a call for you in your yielding to the Holy Spirit you purpose to read. Nataka ujipe jib. When was the last time apart from when we are here on cha- in church? that you chose to sit down and study the bible by yourself when was the last time when was the last time because it is by you reading that you are able to understand the knowledge of paul in the mystery of christ Now transforming that knowledge to become that knowledge is the work of the Holy Spirit not the work of much reading Because there are people that have read this Bible much more than you have done and they are not believers they can be able to cram and recite for you Genesis Exodus Leviticus numbers Deuteronomy and you will be looking at them and they are not believers they don't have the life of god so what differentiates you from them is your yielding to the holy spirit and then you bear fruit so by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 important which in other ages was not made known which in other ages was not made known i am not going to ask us to to open there but let me give you homework again and you go and read first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to 16 that the things that were not known to men because of the spirit of god resident in us we know them That is the privilege that you have received as a believer. So the people that keep saying, you know, me I am empty, you are not. You just think you are empty. My prayer for you even as Paul prayed, we are going to read that at the end is that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know. Don't just see how I know. Do you know there are people that just see how the pastor knows? Eh hey, that pastor anajua. Eh hey, huyu mtu anajua. But when do you know? Hey, huyu ana, huyu mhubiri anajua. Wewe unajua ama haujui? Paul's prayer is not that you may see how he knows. But that you may know because you have seen that a believer knows. Verse 5 which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets question is who is an apostle who is a prophet 
so that you may not exclude yourself. Useme jumisi aposo kwa kuitwa na jina hiyo kitu haijakuwa revealed kwangu. Mm-mm. Hmm. He told his disciples that you will be filled you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses he ends by saying unto the ends of the earth yet in 28 of matthew he says that we make all the world his disciples hey so that we are all partakers of the receiving of the power when the holy spirit comes How many of us are disciples of Christ Jesus? You have the spirit of God in you. The ability to know and to do good because it has been given to you. To know what is mysterious to others. What is unknown to others is known to you. What is disturbing to others is not to you because of the knowledge. The difference is in the knowledge. Is God So which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets verse 6 that the gentiles them that we are not biologically Jews should be fellow heirs so do not think that you are lesser than the person who lives in Israel of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Now let us go back to chapter 1. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Friends, when we understand this life, we we just love to be there and have a beautiful time with the Holy Spirit, being led into the purity of the knowledge of God and learning the impure and learning the purity of the life of god because that is how we bear fruit that is how we bear fruit so verse 15 ephesians chapter 1 ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 he says therefore and i'll end with this therefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and your love for all the saints i want to encourage you just sit in your study sit and watch how the apostles prayed in the bible and purpose to pray that way and learn to pray that way so look at the apostles from from the acts of the apostles all the way to revelation and then just see the pattern of their prayer how they prayed and start to pray like that start to build yourself up in your most holy faith in the way the apostles our examples prayed so that in case of any desire any desire any challenge any issue you see how did they pray and you are taught and gradually you will be learning how to pray You will be learning how to lead us even in prayer. You will be learning how to lead your family in prayer. You will be learning how to lead yourself in prayer. Praying the way even scripture has has said. Now see this. 15. Therefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints do not cease to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers here are the prayer that paul is making that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him not here that he's not speaking about the holy spirit he's speaking about your ability to receive the wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him which is in the holy spirit that is in you that is
is why it is important. Because it is in there that the believer is able to walk out in strength. Peter who was fearful at the crucifixion of Jesus, at the trial of Jesus, so, fear, so fearful that he denied Jesus, was the same Peter that when they were in Jerusalem, in Acts chapter 2, the person that previously was so full of fear, he couldn't stand together with Jesus. When this spirit of God came in him, he received boldness. Open the upper room open. Came out. Met with people from various nationalities who were gathered in Jerusalem and addressed them. I want to tell you that among those people were some of them that were part of the team that crucified Jesus. That is why I believe it is around verse 38 of Acts chapter 2. They were cut to the heart after he had spoken whatever he had spoken to them. Please just put for us verse 38, Acts chapter 2. And they start asking him, what do we do? What do we do? Then Peter said to them, verse 37, now when they heard this, this is after Peter had come out and spoken to them with a lot of boldness. He told them the gospel. He preached to them. Previously he was fearing to be there for Jesus. Yet now ako peke yake, lakini anaelewa na anajua ya kwamba hayuko peke yake. Hata kama kimwili anaonekana akiwa peke yake, lakini juu ya yule ambaye ako ndani mwake, anajua ya kwamba hayuko peke yake tena. That is the boldness that people can come out with. My prayer for you is that you may know the ability of Christ Jesus in you and the spirit of God in you. So, he speaks to them. They have heard and then they were cut to the heart. The Holy Spirit in you can cause you to speak things and men will be. Okay. They were cut to the heart and they say to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? The Lord work in you that in your speech men will ask you what should we do? That men will ask you because of the spirit of God in you, what shall we do? That is my prayer. And then he speaks to them, verse 38. Repent. Make a complete turn around. So back to Ephesians 1. This is the prayer. Verse 17. Ephesians 1, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Understanding because there are many that read without understanding. Your desire should be that as you study the word you have an understanding of it. That can only happen when there is a relationship with the Holy Spirit. When the eyes of understanding are enlightened then you know the hope of his calling. The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The exceeding greatness of his power toward you who believe, toward me who believe only according to the working of his mighty power, not according to your trying. And that is the same power that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. That should be the desire of your heart. This is available to you. The Lord desires that you are available, that he may diffuse within your mind these realities. Let's be on our feet. Father, thank you for the power that is diffused in us as we pray. Thank you for the power that is in us even as we pray in the name of Jesus. That as we are given to prayer, that as we are given to supplication, that as we are given to you in prayer, O oh God, there is an understanding that we live in you and we are in you justified and your spirit, O oh God, is revealed in us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your provision. 
I thank you, Jesus, for your spirit that is abundantly available in us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your spirit of truth that is always our comfort. That your spirit of truth is always our satisfaction, our justification, our peace, our joy, our goodness, our life. And that is how we live. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, your voice and celebrate the spirit of God that you have received. Christ that you have received. That you are not struggling anymore. And all you do is yield to the spirit of God that is in you. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. And saints that is the knowledge which is of God that we live by. Once you have him, you have it all. Amen.